Greetings in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ to your brothers and sisters. Once again, I'm delighted to be back bringing God's message to you all. Not sure that I was able to do it because there has been a very bad weather in the city of Colombo and many people are sick. In fact, uh, my wife uh, also uh, got uh, sick uh, and then some of the people who are in my household so was uh, not sure whether we could really able to uh, do the recording today but thank God I'm here doing the recording to bring this message across to you um, though not fully um, kind of uh, uh, strong physically but uh, spiritually and mentally I'm absolutely strong as ever. But serving the Lord is the most important thing. Uh, nothing comes uh, before that. And that's why I look forward for this moment to share God's wonderful message to all dear brothers and sisters across the whole world. Brothers and sisters, today is the 15th of uh, October 2022. Another two months time, this event, event, eventful year to end and then we will herald the 2023. As the time passes by, I can tell you we are getting close to one of the most awaited event for the Bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can say that. I'm telling that because it's not mine. But it is what the word of God says. I see many things happening across the world. Many things happening across the whole world. As I told you, biblical prophecies are being fulfilled. Daily basis. Daily basis, brothers and sisters, can you believe? And I want to tell you very clearly that our God is a living God. Our God is a living God. He is not a deity. He is not an idol, he is not a, some sort of a, a, a object, but he is a living God. This living God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than anybody, anyone does think. And that's why brothers and sisters, his most holy and supreme word is being fulfilled now. There is nothing greater than this, this wonderful book. There is no book to be compared for this in the whole world. The only book that has been translated to all the living languages, even the dead languages. The only book that consisting of everything relating to the history, past, present, and future. Everything relating to the biology, psychology, chemistry, physiology, sociology, technology, you name it. This can go on, on, it's here. That's why this is a unique book. This is not a religious book. This is not a religious book. That's why brothers and sisters, this is the mind of God revealed. When God told Abraham on the circumcision, on the eighth day, you must circumcise every male child that is born. That's exactly very religiously followed by Jewish people. But they followed onto this letter, not like um, Arabs and Muslims. On the eighth day, and it is now only the doctors, medical doctors, finds eight days the, the lower blood circulation to the male organ on the eighth day. So brothers and sisters, now that's why I say the mind of God to be instruction side. About food, what to eat, what not to eat, how to eat, when to eat. All that is here. 
that's why this is not something a man has uttered but uttered by the living god and presented to his people first to israel then to the bride of the lord jesus christ brothers and sisters once again i must tell you at the very beginning my message is not to convert people to christianity or to any other religion i am not a religious person coming from a buddhist background 46 years ago my living god had mercy and grace upon me pulled me out of darkness into light brought me to experience the salvation redemption in filling of his spirit and i've been walking with him ever since that day and also serving him i'm thankful to god that god has saved me in that manner and brought me made me a son of him it's a glorious privilege brother says is there is no other privilege i can tell you there is no other privilege uh, anybody could be than becoming a son of god not the son the lord jesus christ we are all sons and daughters of god we are all sons and daughters of god the lord jesus christ came and paid the price for you and i to become sons and daughters of god we are all sons of and daughters of god inside adam and he lost us so my task is not to preach a religion or miss teach a religion convert people to religion no my task is to present the truth to the beloved beloved bride of the lord jesus christ and the true church of the lord jesus christ headed by none other than the lord jesus christ is it's not an easy task it's not a glamorous job presenting the truth before presenting the truth you have to stand for the truth if you're standing for the truth you will live for the live the truth and the truth that's living you and that's the challenge so the easy task and i have gone through that i must tell you having gone through that i found every day a precious experience my living god has given to me i'm thankful to him nothing greater than that for me than serving him brothers and sisters we have been sharing wonderful things in the last so many sundays i know only few will uh fathom and understand not all because it is the bride of the lord jesus christ who are called the wise daniel said Book of Daniel, chapter twelve. Only the wise shall understand. No wise. So there is two categories, even in the in the Christian world: the wise and the foolish. And the foolish are the people who are connected to all this denomination system and become religious Christians. But the wise are the not the people who are belong to any one of them. They are not in the religious Christianity. They are outside. they are with the word and the word is in them and they are led by the spirit of god they are not floating somewhere but they are led by the spirit of god so brothers and sisters that's why they are called the bride of the lord jesus christ and true church of the lord jesus christ too and we have been talking a important subject but i want to tell you brothers and sisters how the world is getting set for a wonderful event that is going to take place for sleep to the bride of the lord jesus christ thereafter for millennium rule that will take place because the, this world is going to the last rounds the last rounds they are threatening of the nuclear war Russians are threatening that they will use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. And the West United States of America 
and the Europe is pushing Russia towards that. Because they are pumping more money, more weapons, more money, more weapons to Ukraine, prolonging the war. And possibly triggering a nuclear. They can easily, who can stop this? The Americans and the Union, European Union, not Russia. Russians will not stop. Russians will not stop, I can tell you. Russians will not stop this war. The only people that can stop this war is Americans and European Union, and they will not stop. They are pushing Russia to the wire, to the wall. And there is possibility. That's why, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, things are becoming very dangerously heading towards the Bible talks about Malachi prophecy, the dreadful day. The dreadful day. And that full day, yeah, we are heralding. But I can tell you, the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ will not be there. As I've been telling you, there are beautiful times and shadows in the Bible. We were talking about now Enoch, and we were talking about Elijah. And as I told, Enoch is a type of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Seventh from Adam. He was taken up, did not face it. But before his death, he walked with God. The Bible says you cannot walk together unless you be agreed. He agreed with God. Because the Bible also says, My ways are higher than your ways, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So therefore, he walked in God's ways. Is higher. And that's why he was called and taken out without facing death. He was transfigured. And Bible says in Hebrew chapter 11, before his transfiguration into the dimension of the realm of God, he had a testament. And what was that testament? He pleased God. And Bible says, even in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 5 or 6, without faith, impossible to please God. What is faith? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word. <coughs> word means mind of God revealed. Word means <clears throat> mind of God in you. Without faith, impossible to please God. So brothers and sisters, that's what Enoch did. Enoch was taken up the last of the Adamic race, Adamic race or the Seth's race. Noah went through the floods. Judgment. At that time, the world was corrupt and wicked. Jesus says, in the days of Noah. The kind of thing that took place is now taking place in the same fashion and the mindset of the people. So brothers and sisters, we know that God is really fulfilling His. And that's why these types and shadows are matter, particularly to you and I who are part of the Bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. The second we have been talking about Elijah and we have been bringing you to various important culminative statuses to understand the journey of Elijah towards the transfiguration. We touch on the aspect that uh, he was given certain uh, closing up uh, responsibilities by God. The anointing a new king for Syria, anointing of a new king for Israel, and then appointing a prophet to carry on certain work 
Because when the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ is gone, there's certain work that will remain for the foolish virgins to be um, recognized that they are now left with no option but to stand for the truth and play with their lives. And that's why there will be some work remaining. Once the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ is gone, there will be still some things to be there for the foolish virgins to give their lives holding on to the truth. That challenge would be there. Because the Bible says they would be facing immense challenges economically, socially, in every frontier. And that's the very reason that there has to be a, uh, some left remain remnant uh, connected to the revelation of God, the word of God that will be sustaining the foolish virgin. Because that, during that period, only the um, foolish virgins, when they realize they are not part of the bride, they left behind, they will run to the end there, look for the word of God. Look for the revelation of God. Look for the what is mentioned in the Bible. They will go from cover to cover. They will try to read Book of Revelation. They try to read Matthew 24. They will read many things. They will to even read Ezekiel and Daniel. Find what's like, like Herod did, you know, when the wise men came and uh, they foolishly went to King Herod's palace and asked, where is the king that is born? And he got a lot. And he called the, 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 his advisors and asked, is there anything like that in the scriptures? And then they brought the books. And when the books were bought in, they said such and such a thing would be there. But they made a foolish decision. Because wise men did not really come back and told where he is. So brothers and sisters, like that, they would, they would be looking for the scriptures. Where, where, what happened? How will it happen? By that time, it's too late. And then they would search and seek for the truth. And it is among them that only that can stand for the truth pay with their lives. Otherwise, others would uh, give up and become part of the, the worldly system. They will be part of the worldly system. Only the foolish virgins who had the metal to go through, the courage of their convictions, Pay for the truth with their lives. The great tribulation time. So, brothers and sisters, if you are part of the foolish virgins, you are in the redomination system. I warn you. I warn you because you will be plagued with the, the diseases of the, the mother harlot. Roman Universal Church, the Holy Roman Empire, headed by Papa, you will be plagued with that. That's why it is going from Holy Roman Empire to Holy Roman Catholic Church, Papa to all the denominations, including Charismatic Pentecostals, Evangelicals, and now Brennamites. All are gone in the way of Baal. But that's what we discuss. So brothers and sisters, it's a dreadful day for foolish virgins. So it's in Elijah's time. Elijah was taken up. Elijah went through the day. He went through immense challenges. Elijah. He faced various situations. He went through that. 
that's the pattern that God has given to us. And we touch on last Sunday, finally, the journey towards the transfiguration of Elijah. Once he fulfilled his earthly responsibilities, and God asked him to do, do, do this, do this. And then finally he uh, decided uh, that this is now time for my preparation. While he preparation, God has been revealing to him what will happen to him. God revealing to him what is going to take place in the journey ahead of him. And he very well knew about it. And that's why he was preparing. And come to the place called Gilgal, I explained to you what is Gilgal. Twelve stones for the twelve tribes. With the twelve tribes that got the Torah and the law and the prophets. Not only twelve tribes. Now we have the old and the new. The new we have the twelve apostles, the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Where he gave his truth, uh, his word to the apostles when he descended on the day of Pentecost and he said all power is given unto me, tarry till you receive and he gave that power to the apostles apostles got it and that's why it's the twelve foundations of apostles as I told you brothers and sisters twelve tribes are known as twelve gates and twelve apostles are known as twelve foundations that's why Ephesians 2 2 20 says Ephesians 2 chapter 2 verse 20 says we are built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ will be chief cornerstone 12 plus 12 24 1 the Lord Jesus Christ Chief cornerstone, 25 means 7, 2, 5, 25 means 7, and you totally completion. So, from Gilgal, move to Bethel, to understand the mind of God, the house of God, the mind of God is revealed. From Bethel, he goes to Jericho, shed all the worldliness. The worldly passions and desires. He was in the world, but not of the world. He was in the world, not of the world. So that, you know, your life will attune to the expectations of the mind of God. Once the mind of God is revealed. And better the mind of God is revealed. And then you come to Jericho, you shred all the, the worldliness, because you are not of the world. You are in the world, not of the world. So every, every attributes of worldliness goes off from you. That's why Paul said, if you are risen with Christ, seek those things that are above, not below. And that's where brothers and sisters, from that point, you go to Jordan. That's where Elijah came. And then uh, what happens there? You will understand his way. But Jordan is a place where when Jesus Christ represented the old and the new went to the Elijah came in the spirit of John the Baptist represent the old and then Jesus went down to the waters of Rosa the whole heaven opens and God said, this is my beloved son. I'm very pleased. So brothers and sisters, you come to the point of transfiguration, there has to be a moment where the Almighty Father will say, this is mine. This is my property. I own this. I'm very pleased of you. You are my son, daughter. I'm very pleased of you. And there is nothing he knew that displeasing in me. Nothing. Not a single iota that he knew that displeases no me. And God says that then ready to be taken off your feet and he too 
the Guru has transfiguration. Brothers and sisters, this is a wonderful thing that we mentioned. And today, we will study a little bit more on that. Uh, Second Kings, Second Kings, Chapter Two. Second Kings, Chapter Two. Verse eight to fifteen. Elijah took his mantle. Now remember, now they are at Jordan. Elijah and Elisha. Elijah took this mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they divided thither and thither, so they too went over the Iger. Remember, he took his mantle, that means his cloak, his uh, covering, his cloak, and then um, wrapped it together and smote the waters. Smote the waters. And they and and they divided hither and thither, so that they went to a dragon like the Red Sea crossing, Red Sea crossing, where we were. Elijah also had that privilege walking on the dry land when this miracle took place. The man, that's where you are buried. What is Jesus? Went to the waters, buried, and you bury everything there. That's why, for us also, when we baptize in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are buried. We are buried. Our old man is buried. We rise up with the new man. So, brothers and sisters, and on the dry they went, and it came to pass. They were gone over, Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what shall I do before I be taken away? Now Elijah knows very well, he will be taken away. Elijah said, I pray thee, let the lower portion of thy spirit be upon me. Now I want to tell you something, brothers and sisters here. Elisha said, No, his master is going to be taken away. His master is going to be taken away. All this time he depended on him. He followed for him, not only for him, he totally and utterly depended on him. Really depended on him. But when he is now being taken away, Elijah now asked him, what do you want really now? I am going to be taken away. But he says, Elijah said unto said. I pray, let the double portion of thy spirit be upon. Let the double portion of thy spirit. I can tell you, brothers and sisters. Because of that, Elisha had many tremendous successes. Many miracles he performed. Even there, Elijah. But he died. He died. He was buried. In his sepulchre, there was a man that was dead, brought to his sepulchre, and as that body touched uh, Elisha's body, that man rose from the dead. <laughs> that man rose from the dead. That's a kind of power. So, but essentially, when he asked the double portion of the spirit, I must tell you. The foolish virgins that would remain, who would not be part of the rapture, who would not be part of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you need to have something extra, something more for you to go through the day of tribulation. To come up, come out as saints. Something more. Just Simple saying born again and going to a charismatic or Pentecostal evangelical or Bernamite place is not sufficient. You need something 
greater in you to stand at that day. But that day would be awesome. Never, miss, never ever witness the economic kind of hardships. Still we are experiencing a little bit now, globally. All countries except Israel is facing inflation, price rising, energy crisis, power crisis, financial crisis, all countries. Except the time later, Israel. If they are doing the right thing in the right way, at the right time, in the right place. As a country and as a people. But taking direction from the Torah. Yes. So, brothers and sisters, there has to there will be something extra needed for the left or left the foolish virgins to recognize they were not part of the bride of Lord Jesus Christ. They were only a part of a Christian religious movement, Pentecostal, charismatic and all kinds of denominations. They will only realize that and it's too late. That's why when the door is closed, they said, open to us. Open to us. And I don't know you. Depart. So brothers and sisters, now Elijah, Elijah asked double portion and was given to him. Verse 10 says, and he said, thou hast asked a hard thing, nevertheless, if thou see me, when I am taken from thee, it shall be unto thee, but if not, it shall not be. What it is? What did Elijah was telling? Elijah was telling to Elisha, when I am taken up, when I am taken up, if you are able to see my crossing to the other dimensions, that's what he says. But if, the, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, that will be unto thee, but if not, that shall be. In other words, at the time, at the hour of tribulation, whether they would have the, the metal of the truth of the living God or the revelation. And that's exactly his brothers and sisters that was needed. Uh, so that Elisha had a glimpse of things that God would do. That's exactly what is also ha happening in the, the in time as well as the charismatic and Pentecostal and evangelical um, Christian religious movement. They are able to see some things, but it is blurred. It is blurred for them. That's what Jesus said. Unto them it is not given. Unto you it is given. Simply know the, the truth. And it came to pass as they went up, went on, and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. Horses of fire. And parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven, into the dimension of God. And Elijah saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, chariots of Easter, and the horsemen thereof. And I saw, he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and read it. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah, fell on him, and went back and stood at the bank of Jordan. So, brothers and sisters, that's why I must tell you. The Christian world doesn't understand the realm of God. The Christian world doesn't understand. The paradise they are thinking or the heaven they are thinking is uh, it's not some uh, fanciful 
place. It's a place where God's glory and the majesty is to be. That's it. Where God's glory and majesty is revealed on whom? In all of us. As his children. So, uh, we live in a three dimensional world. As I told you, the fourth dimension is in the center, the Sheol. We are the core where the 8000 Fahrenheit heat is there. Then the fourth dimension is the spirit dimension where time and space and consciousness is governed by the spiritual um, agents of the living God, the angels, the messengers. And the next five dimensions are in the realm of God. The fifth, the sixth, and the seventh, and eighth, and ninth, and tenth. All connected to the realm of God. The power was taken up to third heaven means the is the seventh dimension. But remember that all these dimensions are death. And that's why Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 2, In my father's house there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. How did he do that? He went to the cross to prepare us for the place. Prepare us for the place. And the dimensions he mentioned, the realm of God, my father sounds very mentioned. Brothers and sisters, I must tell you very clearly, because First Corinthians chapter let's read that. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Sorry, uh, First Corinthians chapter two, first nine. But as it is written, the eye hath not seen, no ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things which the Lord God has prepared for them that love him. And God has revealed them to us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searched all things, yea, deep things of God. What man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. The eye hath not seen, the ear hath not heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man things which God has prepared for them that love him. That's what, brothers and sisters, the eye cannot hear, see, Ear cannot hear, nor can it be understood by the heart, the things that God has prepared for us, His children. That is why our God is a, the God of the universe. Because God created this whole universe. Our planet Earth is a tiny little place. He created this whole universe. And he is not part of the universe. He is not any object of the universe, either like the sun, moon, or the stars. He is not any one of those. He is not an idol or image. He is far above. He cannot be visualized by any object, whether it is a human image or any material. That's why. Our God, Jesus said to her, that woman in Samaria, when she asked whether we should meet in the mountain or in Jerusalem, she said, no. Neither in Jerusalem nor in, in mountains. In Judea. Neither in Jerusalem nor in this God. Worship the Father in spirit and truth. Worship the Father in spirit and truth. That's what is true. Worship the Father 
and spit it out. So brothers and sisters, I have not seen, yeah, I have not heard, into the heart what God has prepared. There is something bigger, greater, glorious, mightier, majestic. God has in store for you and me, his children, naturally. Now, brothers and sisters, so these are all important for us to know. Then only we understand how this process is going to take place. We are living in a three-dimensional world. The fourth dimension is the center. The fifth dimension is the spirit dimension. The angelic spirit, which is the agents of the living God, controlling the dynamics of the planet Earth. But within that control, demonic spirits, the angels of Lucifer also operates. With their time is still out there. They will be judged and finished off before the millennium rule. But after the millennium rule, but um, after the millennium rule, they have a, they, 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 that would be the end of their entire uh, existence. Whatever there is a bad way or good way, whatever the existence they had, it will be ending there. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you today something very important. Because we need to understand that. Then only we will understand what God has prepared for them that loving. The eye has not seen, no ear heard, no has it got into the heart of them. Let's see these things because it's very important, brothers and sisters, we understand this because um, truth has to be well presented, nothing but that. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 13, 20. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. If Christ be not be risen, then our preaching in vain. Your faith is also in vain. Yea, that we were found a false witness of God because of him uh, testified that he uh, testified God and he raised up. For whom he raised up, that so be dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised. If Christ is not raised, your faith is in vain. This Christ is not, uh, that's the fundamental truth about our calling. To understand the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people have doubts about it, but not the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. Yea, we are found false witness of God because we are testified of God that He be raised up. He be raised up Christ, and whom we raised up not, so be that dead Christ not. Verse 16. For if the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised. If Christ is not raised, then your faith in vain ye are. In your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ also perish. If this if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all of men are most miserable. If we are living only for blessing Christianity, that is the case, that's what Paul is talking about. Paul is talking about that. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all of all men most miserable. 
But now crisis is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Who are they? The Old Testament saying. He became the first fruits of them that slept already. Already dead. He became the first fruit together with them, they rose. The Old Testament saying. Yeah. Now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them the sin. Old Testament says. For since one man came dead, also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so even so Christ shall be revealed. Christ shall be made alive. For in Adam it says here, For I have seen Adam all die, even so in Christ shall be made alive. But every man is so know the Christ the first fruit afterward, they that are at his coming. There's a group of people who are already slept. That's what he's mentioned. That's he became the first fruits of death that all. After the manner of men, I have, I have yeah, sorry, um, 23, I'm going back to 23. As in Adam, we all die, as in Christ shall be made alive. But every man is all know the Christ, the first fruits, after they, they there are Christ at his coming. First the dead in Christ shall rise up. So it talks about first the slip, mean the Old Testament saints. But here the living element of the people uh, who have been raised up in death. Now, all the Old Testament saints are all gone through the full redemption. They don't need not go through again. But the New Testament, bright Lord Jesus Christ, from the efficient church age to the, the, our last church age, there are hundreds and thousands, probably even millions, who are now in their grace. And those people from all the church ages need to be raised up. The first thing that will happen is dead in Christ will rise up first. Across the whole world. Across the whole world. Dead in Christ shall rise up first. Then that's what it talks about. As in Adam, all die, so even so Christ shall be revealed, shall be made alive. But every man in his own order, the Christ, the first fruit after, afterward, they are that uh, Christ at his coming. This is referring to the, the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ that will be lifted up. I also want to touch on. Um, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42 to 49. 42. So, so also this is the resurrection. Of the dead. It is sown in it is sown in corruption, raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, raised in power. For it is sown a natural body, raised in the spiritual body. It, so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, last last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Lord Jesus Christ. Now, brothers and sisters, what Paul talks about is absolutely very important because it's an um, important thing that I say. Um, because of the fact that 
uh, because the fact that you know the resurrection is resurrection of the dead is the most important foundation for the the called out one which is the church because if there is no resurrection there is no hope for us because the entire entire our call for the redemption salvation stands on the the resurrection they try us up they didn't try shall rise first we who are alive shall be changed in a moment and that's why we need to know very clearly very clearly on the aspect of how we are going to understand god you know in the resurrection resurrection from from resurrection of the lord jesus first and became a living soul the last and become a quickening spirit that's why the spirit is given to us the spirit of christ or the spirit of god you want to us brothers and sisters why the spirit of christ given to us paul says second corinthians chapter 5 verse 16 or not second corinthians chapter 5 verse 16 let's let me read from um, verse 15 and he died for all for all the lord jesus christ they which are which live should not, not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again wherefore henceforth died and rose again wherefore henceforth we know man after the flesh ye do we have known christ after the flesh yet from henceforth we know him no more when the spirit of christ comes brothers and sisters that's why i'm telling you when the spirit of christ comes to you that's what paul talk about here. he died for all that which live should not perish forth live unto themselves but unto him who died for them and rose again died for them and rose again so that you and i would be resurrected if we are dead we will be changed if we are living our mortal body will be tough figure we are living so it's so wonderful here when he says we are for henceforth we know no man after the flesh so we have known christ after the flesh he knows we call you after the flesh apostles knew after the flesh and then he says yet for now henceforth we know him no henceforth we know him no no more we know him no more on the in the flesh why with the spirit of god which is the spirit of christ comes into us brings the the spirit of god which is the word of god the mind of god into us that is absolutely essential for the journey towards the transfiguration brothers and sisters that is why it is so important that bible is talking about and this is very vividly very clearly presented by none other than the apostle of the lord jesus christ jude in the book of jude 
before revelation the last book only one chapter is there let me read from um, 1 to 15 Jude the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James to them that are sanctified by God and the father presented and preserved in the in Jesus Christ now here is nothing to be print here also sanctified by the father and preserved in Jesus means we are still as long as the lamb of god as long as the efficacy of his blood as long as the grace of god is upon us as long as the mercy of god is upon us now through the glorious sacrifice of the lord jesus christ on the cross that effect is still there until we are all all the redeemed christ from the first church age to this church age and the living element all of us are being redeemed fully and transfigured we all need to be fully transfigured and redeemed and transfigured to rise up to that moment that god has decided for that's what judy said servant of jesus christ brother of james that we are sanctified by god the father sanctified them and preserved in jesus christ preserved in jesus christ and god father's purpose we are sanctified set apart for the father and preserved in the lord jesus christ until the dead in Christ shall rise we who are alive shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye then he says mercy unto you peace love and be multiplied beloved when i gave you all diligence to write unto you the common salvation it was needful for me to write to you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints Paul talks about contending for the faith. What is contending for the faith? Faith means the word of God or the mind of God that is revealed to us. And we should know how to really be preserving that. Once the revelation comes, so we are all preserved in in Christ. preserved in Christ his revelation his calling his calling his revelation his insight his knowledge his faith everything we have the faith of the son of the living god we have the knowledge of the son of the living god the spirit of christ is quickening in our mortal body transforming us to the journey towards the transfiguration verse 3 beloved when i gave you all diligence right unto you the common salvation it was needful me right exhort you you should earnestly contend for the faith this is exactly the time when she says that when the son of man comes shall you find faith contend for the faith fight for that to not be there god yes but then he is there is a amount of revelation that god has assigned to you amount of knowledge that have been assigned to you that need to be experienced that's what this paul jude is talking about that content for the faith that is given to you to the full exercise reason being was for For there are certain men kept anavyas who were before all ordained of to this consideration, condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God, only Lord God, 
bringing various deities and things like that at that time also. Now Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance though we are once knew this, how that Lord having saved people out of the land of Egypt, out of destroyed them, believe Lord. That's again talks about the time. And the angels which kept not the first estate, but left their own habitation, had to preserve everlasting chains and darkness and judgment of great day. Even Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them which like manner, giving themselves over to their fornication, going after strange flesh. St. Paul, for an example, suffering and vengeance of eternal life. Likewise, those filthy dreamers defy flesh, despite dominion and speak evil of dignity. Yet Michael, Archangel, when he contended with the level, dispute not the body of Moses, does not gain any really accusation, but said, The Lord will rebuke thee. But these speak of know not what they know naturally, but brute beasts, those things which are which they corrupt. Who unto them they all are gone in the way, gone in the way of Cain, and guilty after the error of Balaam, and reward of perishes in the game saying of God. This is where brothers and sisters, they are all gone in the way of Cain, really, really after the error of Balaam, and perish in the game saying of the God. Now these all what happened in the Israel as a nation? Um, way of Cain, we explained to you many times, way of Cain is. Way of the world, it's Cain's people, became Canaanites, very worldly people. And that's why it sets people mingle together and create uh, children which are totally different. And we are coming from that. That's why it says these kind of people that um, are the ones that really corrupt the minds of the genuine, sometimes trying to corrupt the minds of genuine elect of God, but they can't do it. Genuine elect never fall into prayer for that. They will always be preserved in Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 14, I'll just slip the uh, next two verses. Verse 40, and, and Enoch also seventh from Adam, from seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Enoch saw it at that day, God's redemption plan being fulfilled. Come with ten thousand of his saints, God ruled the planet Earth for a thousand years. Rule the planet Earth for a thousand years. Restore the planet Earth back to its form majestic glory when it handed over to Adam first time. So brothers and sisters, it's going to be a very important time when the, the Lord Jesus Christ would come as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, together with the Bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, and sitting all of us, will roar and reign this platter for thousand years. And that is the reason this resurrection we are talking about immortalization of the mortality in corruption of the corruption is so important in the moment that we are living in as we are heading towards the journey of the transfiguration. Now, brothers and sisters, that is the reason, brothers and sisters, that the Bible always talks about wonderful types and shadows that he has presented for the benefit of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, two things 
that will indeed happen from the genuine true bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the hour that she is living, she will be fulfilling this commandment to the very latter. What is that commandment? It find Jesus mentioned in, in fine Matthew chapter 22. Verse 37 to 22, verse 37. Chapter 22, verse 35, I'll read it from. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question tempting him and saying, Mark, which is the great commandment in the law? She said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Is the first and the great, great commandment. The second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. These are the two commandments hanging and all the law and the prophets. Two commandments. Now one of the things that would be very clearly visible in the true church and the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ is fulfillment of these two commandments. Where the entire Old Testament uh, Ten Commandments was summarized in the two by the Lord Jesus Christ. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. Remember that um, somebody asked him, what, who is my neighbor? And the neighbor, uh, loving your neighbor is not giving uh, some rice or some uh, curries or lift to next door neighbor or some give a, some benefit to the next door neighbor. No. When Jesus referred the story of the Samaritan, the Samaritan was um, going towards Jerusalem to worship God, to do the things connected to the things of the design of God. Jerusalem is that. But there was a man who was coming from Jer Jerusalem to Jericho. But that's why he got really hammered by people and then the Samaritan really look after him and so brothers and sisters loving your neighbor is recognizing the fact among the called out ones anybody really going on the wrong way and if anybody are going on the wrong way you are brutally and clearly tell brutally and clearly tell that's what the, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is in. Not to compromise. I can give some meals to um, somebody and say I'm loving my neighbor. No. If you, there is a famous story, if you, Chinese or probes, if you give um, fish to some needy man, he will ask for the fish again. But if you teach him, how to fish? That's exactly different. So brothers and sisters, what we find here is that loving God, loving your neighbor is connected to showing the neighbor the way of the living God and bringing him also like you into his path. We have a responsibility. Anybody among your family members who are trying to go from Jerusalem to Jericho, you need to deal with that. Anybody who are part of the church, local church or part of your fellowship 
who are trying to move from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho, you have to correct them and bring them to the path. That's exactly what the sense it is. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Because you are a called out ones and you want the people who are amongst this calling not to fall prey to various challenges and drop off. Loving God, that's why brothers and sisters, we are given two things. When the Holy Spirit gives to us, He says, I will write my law on your heart. I'll put my law into your heart. In Hebrews chapter 10. I'll read it. Hebrews chapter Chapter 10 verse um, 16. This is the covenant I will make with them. Verse 16. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law into their hearts. And in their minds, I will write it. Uh, in their minds, I will write it. Put it to my heart. In their minds, I will write it. When God writes in your mind, you, He will write on your right mind and the left mind. Right brain and the left brain. Why uh, we say we have in our brain, we have right brain, left brain. Both. So that is the triggering the divine consciousness. Divine consciousness will trigger divine thinking. Divine thinking will trigger divine action. Again, to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. So brothers and sisters, it is in that context that we need to really understand the fact that, that our lives are twofold. One is the love of God is shed abroad in my heart. That love of God that is shed abroad in my heart is not a filio or eros, it's agape. Yaga. That is why Prophet Samuel told Saul, the obedience is better than sacrifice. Cattle on thousand hills belongs to me. Our God is not like a man or anything else. Our God is the supreme, the almighty, living God, the creator. So brothers and sisters, loving God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. We have a right brain, left brain, brain. Emotions are rationality. Emotions are rational. Rationality part is where we understand God not foolishly. That's why we are given wisdom. That's why the Spirit of God brings wisdom. Bible says, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. By his wisdom he has founded the earth. By his understanding he has established the heavens. Heavens means the realm of God. By his knowledge he has established, broken the depths and all the whole process that take place in space, time and in, oper in the operation of the writer. So, when you love God, love the world is not in you. That's exactly, Elijah shed everything that was in him. His clothes, his mantle, everything he cast away. He had passed Bethel into Jericho, shed everything that is connected to the world, came to Jordan, and everything that was left with him, even the mantle, he dropped off. Then, when he was transfigured, Elisha saw it. Brothers and sisters, in the, the law of God, it always works on one specific pattern. 
First the spiritual, then the natural. Don't put the natural before spiritual. When God created Adam in the realm of the spirit first. He created him in the realm of the spirit first. That's why 1 John chapter 3. Sorry, it's um, John, Epistle of John, chapter 3 2. Third Epistle of John, only one chapter is there. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may be prosper and be in good health. As thy soul prospers. As thy soul prospers. So the first is the spiritual. Spiritual. In the realm of things connected to God. Rationally recognizing God. Not as a physical object. Or physical image. Or a statue or idol. But... The Almighty Creator, the Spirit, that's why Jesus said, the other come the true worshippers. The true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. The other come the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. That's why you need to be more rational to understand. That's why we are given wisdom. God has not given to us a spirit of fear. But of power and of love and a sound mind. Sound mind. The sound mind is what is most important gift that God has given to the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, the word of God comes to us. The word of God brings to us the mind of God being revealed. That is what everything becomes very, not artificial or physical, but very spiritual. Because it's connected to the, the spirit and the mind and the emotions. That's why we need to focus on our spiritual, our mental and emotional well-being first. Thus, I repeat you, as the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to focus clearly in our spiritual, mental and emotional well-being. And for that purpose, the Holy Spirit is filling us and the Holy Spirit is revealing the mind of God through the word. And we are given this beautiful book. And if you are going to read, nothing is going to happen to you. I can guarantee that. That's what the people in the charismatic, Pentecostal, evangelical and even the other traditional Christian denomination systems like Catholics, Anglicans, Methodists, Baptists are doing. They are reading. How to come. But the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ is not reading this. They are eating. That's exactly Jesus said. As the lightning coming from the east unto the west. Now that is referring to his arrival to the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming to the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ because that Matthew 24 that significance, what Jesus mentioned there, Matthew 24, let me read it again, can you believe it? Verse 25 to 27, 28, Behold, I have told you before 
Therefore, if they shall say unto Beohees in the desert, go not forth. Beohees in the secret chamber, believe it not. Now, this is message is coming to the, the bride. As a lightning coming out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the sun. Now, this synchronizes with the 1st Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 to 17. When he refers to the Lord shall descend with a shout, voice, and the last one. This light, lightning arrival is referring to that. Wheresoever the carcass is, there are the eagles scattered. Wheresoever the carcass. Carcass means not the dead stuff. Eagles don't eat dead things. It's the vultures that eat the dead things, but the eagle eat living things. Freshly killed with blood they eat. So brothers and sisters, they are eating. So the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ is no longer eating. That's what when the Holy Spirit comes to us, the mind of God reveals. That's why we become very rational. Yeah. So that our emotional well-being is taken care of. After we focusing on that, only the physical livelihood part of it will be brought in. Then only we recognize the fact that we need to make sure in our journey anybody who is really going down to Jericho from Jerusalem we need to warn them. We are part of who part of experience the things of God once and now they are, you know brothers and sisters, I can tell you very clearly in this hour that we are living in, many Christians are becoming very cold. Bible says love of many shall be cold. Yes. When the economic difficulties comes, they will give up everything. Worse, when the tribulation time comes, that's what I say. Elijah asked double portion of his faith to go through that difficult period. Just faith is not enough during that period. We are judged by the Almighty God all the time. How we are living up to our divine mandate. And our human and divine purpose. Our God, the Almighty Father, always now judges us in this time we are living in. How best we are living up to our divine mandate. And based on that, how our physical engagement takes place. And that's why, brothers and sisters, it's so important. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul. So the spiritual side first. Once that is fulfilled, brothers and sisters, once that is fulfilled, when the love of God is shed abroad in your heart, once you are fulfilling these two commandments, the love of the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, there is one responsibility. To go to the stature and the measure of the Lord Jesus Christ and recognize the fact that how we love our neighbor, which is going from Jericho to, from Jerusalem to Jericho, lift them up. But what we are talking is not having a physical party eating and drinking, that is well taken care All the time people having eating and drinking, they do it so much. Even due to this inflation high, well, people are eating and drinking. That's why Jesus said, it shall be like the days of Noah. Eating and drinking. That's there is enough taking place. But what is not taking place is in the realm of the spirit. The right mind with the living God. 
walking with him. And that's where brothers and sisters, Elijah finally went through the rough generation. And that's exactly Paul is talking about for us in this um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is the most important thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42 to 58. So also the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, raised in power. It is sown a natural body, raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, there is a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man Adam became a living soul. The last Adam made made his quickening spirit. Quickening spirit. The last Adam became a quickening spirit. How be that was not first which spiritual, which is natural. Afterward, that is spiritual. First man is of the earth earthy, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As it is earth is such are they also earthy. As it is heavenly, such are they also heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, the flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does the corruption inherit the incorruption. Behold, I will show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. This is referring to the same prophecy of Paul, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 4, verse 50 to 76. The Lord shall descend with a shout, which has taken place already, with a voice, which is taking place now, and last is the trump, trump of God trump of God. The last trump, the trumpet shall sound. They shall be raised incorruptible. They shall be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on in incorruption. This mortal put on immortality. This corruption, incorruption. This mortal, immortality. That's exactly right, brothers and sisters. It's going to happen. It's going to happen to a group of people called the Bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to happen to a group of people called the True Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, led by the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. No one else. This mortal body of mine and yours is going to be put on immortality. This corruption of mine and yours will put in corruption. That's wonderful assurance given by. And I showcase so many types and shadows towards that. This is going to happen. Make no mistakes. Don't think this is going to be a fairy tale. I'm telling you. God has wonderfully showcased to us how he dealt with Enoch. I would deal with Elijah. And I would deal with Noah after Enoch. I would deal with Elisha after Elijah. So, brothers and sisters, it is so important for you and I to be in the right mindset towards it. The spirit, same spirit. Be the first spiritual, then natural. Now, the spiritual, thereafter, transfiguration of the natural. 
we have to go through that process. When God formed Adam perfectly, first he was created in the realm of the spirit. Spiritual. Then he was formed on the eighth day. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 and Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 is two different happenings, engagements. Process of birth of God. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 is where he formed the man from the dust and breathed into him the not its nostrils and man became a living soul. Perfect. But he was deformed. Perfectly formed man become deformed. And that is the reason that um, sin has to be removed. The original sin. And that is why the Lord Jesus Christ came on the cross, paid the price, and paid fully to reform me, take my ownership back to God. That's why Jesus said, All that thou art given, none is lost. I was reformed. And then, reform me was transformed by the Spirit of God. Giving the word of God and the mind. And then transform me was translated to the kingdom of his son. Translated to the kingdom of his son. That's what the Bible talks about. We are translated into the kingdom of his son. Let me take the scripture for that. We are translated into the kingdom of his son. Translated to the kingdom uh, Translated to the kingdom of his son First Colossians chapter Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 Important to understand scriptures, references so important I'll for your knowledge I'm sharing this Verse 13 says Okay Start 12. First, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us to me to be the partakers of his the partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, who had delivered us from the power of darkness, had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now we have been translated the kingdom of his. We are translated by the fivefold ministry. Translated. Transformation leads to translation. We are translated to the kingdom of His Son. Delivered to translator. After the translation, only transfiguration takes place. At the transfiguration, only this mortal body will put on immortality. This corruption in corruption. This corruption in corruption, this mortality, immortality. At the transfiguration. Like has happened to Elijah, like happened to Enoch, will be happening to the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. And toward that journey, the two conditions have to be strongly embedded in the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, like Elijah has gone through that process, once God began to showcase everything. No secrets. He told him to stand in Gilgal. Gilgal represents the twelve stones. Twelve stones represents the twelve tribes. Twelve tribes represents the Torah given to them. The law and the prophets. Twelve tribes 
Roll it to a stone to present low and low and prophets, but also the apostles. Foundations of the apostles. And Jesus Christ being chief cornerstone. From Gilgal, he went to Bethel to understand the mind of God. When you understand the mind of God, you get rid of every worldly person. We are in the world, but not of the world. We are in the world, not of the world. All the worldliness is gone. And then finally we are led to Jerry, uh, Jordan. And Jordan only that moment of transfiguration is going to take place. Where the heaven opens and God says, this is my beloved son. I will praise to dwell God takes full ownership of he doesn't see anything short coming in you. No errors, no omissions, no sin you, sin in you and me. When the Bible says, he that is born of God, 1 John 3, 9, he that is born of God does not commit sin because he seed in us the world. Bring forth the fruit. Bring forth the fruit. The fruit of the seed is emerging in us. And that, when that emerges, God sees, I'm loving him with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, nothing else. And God sees, this is my son, this is my daughter. And once the, the faith is fully in me, that's what the Bible says. Without faith, impossible to please God. The mind of God is fully in me. God recognizes that I have now reached. There's nothing more in me for God to really deal. Same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is quickening me from the top of my head to bottom of my feet. Physically, spiritually, mentally. My body, soul and spirit. Revealing every wickedness, the crookedness, the uncleanness, unholiness, unrighteousness. Letting his countenance rise in me. Letting his face shining on me. So that majestic and glorious transfiguration can be perfected. And God says, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved God. The lightning coming from the east throughout the east. Where the carcass is, there the eagles are. Where the living. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you are no life. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, I and raise him up at the last day. I am the wine, you are the branches. Bring forth fruit. He is the first fruit. We are thereafter. He's the first fruit. And that's exactly, brothers and sisters, Paul is talking about. Finally, in, in conclusion, I'll share that. Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 13. If there be no resurrection of the dead, Christ is not risen. If Christ is not risen, our preaching in vain and your faith is also in vain. Yea, we have found false witness of God because we have crucified, testified of God that he, had, he has raised up and whom he has not, uh, uh, whom he has raised not up, so that we dead Christ not. If, if the dead Christ not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ not praised, your faith is in vain, yet ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ perished. That in Christ or uh, even the Old Testament says. In this life only we have hope. In Christ we are all of men miserable. That's why I say this 
Pentecostals, Evangelicals, Charismatics, Resignations. Now, but now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. First fruit. Who are they? The Old Testament says. The first fruit of them that slept. For since, uh, from since the, since the, for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. So as in Adam all die, even so Christ shall be made alive. Every man in his own order. Christ the first fruit. Afterward there are Christ at his coming. At his coming. Referring to us. The bride of the Lord is Christ. Christ the first fruit. That is why brothers and sisters I told you. We, have been, we need to be translated to the kingdom of his sons. The fivefold ministry is fulfilling that. By bringing all of us to the unity of faith. The knowledge of the Son of God, the stature and the measure of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the final ministry will bring, bring forth that final ministry of the, that is needed for the transfiguration. And that is why you've got Revelation chapter 10, verse 1, 2, 4. The ministry of the seven thunders. It is sealed up. And God will raise those seven men, send them across the whole world. And they will meet every member of the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, the living element. Every member of the living element. And while they were doing that's why it is going to happen like coming from the east unto the west. Lightning coming from the east one 24 hour. During that period, morning start in Japan, sun rises. Coming from the east unto the west, full 24 hours will be completed. Where the dead in Christ rise, as the dead in Christ rises, Those who are alive, part of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, will be changed. God is no hurry. This is not a magic. Remember, brothers and sisters, God is not a magician. God is the Almighty God. He does beautifully. God does beautifully the way He has created this universe. See the order. See the beauty. See the way it is synchronized. See the way it is harmonized. Say the structure of the whole universe. So God is not rushing things. Beautiful will take place. That's why it says, lightning coming from the east unto the west and shine. The last one. While the dead are raised in one part of the planet, Earth, the same part would be the, the living element will be transfigured. Then comes the other part of the the orbit takes place. Once it is totally completed, all the living Christ are first risen. All the living element also become immortalized, incorrupted. And then only the Lord Jesus Christ will meet him in the air and he'll be taken to be present to the Father. This is not magic, like this Pentecostals. Because brothers and sisters, remember when Jesus rose from the dead, he was there for 40 days. 40 days and 40 nights. He ate and he went and he discussed with many people. So it's God is in no hurry to remove everybody like that. But that would happen. And in his time, he make everything beautiful. In his time. In God's time, he will make all things beautiful. The bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, the most privileged people in the last 2000 years who are part of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the living element, among the living element 
I don't know how many people among us would be living. Some people among us may be dead. But don't worry. Some of us, we don't know. Some of us will be living. Some of us will be living to experience the physical transfiguration so that your life and my life would be immortalized, incorrupted. But some would go through that. That will happen. But we don't have to worry about it. But I will say, dead in Christ shall rise first. First thing is that. When this final ministry triggers the last trump, while God bring that, the final ministry, the ministry of the seven thunders, right across, when that happens, brothers and sisters, I can tell you very clearly. So whether you are dead or living, it doesn't matter. Paul says, for me to die is gain. Yeah, live is Christ. doesn't matter. You will have a beautiful, glorious experience. And Elijah went through that. He went through that beautiful experience. Started from Gilgal, 12 stones, representing 12 gates of the 12 tribes, the Torah, the Law and Prophets, the foundations, the apostles, and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. That's all Bible did. We are built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. That's why the final ministry of the seventh messenger turning the hearts of the children back to the apostolic part. 12 by 12, 24, and plus 1, 25 means 7, number 7, completion. We are living in the last and this final church age, 7th church age. And in this final and last church age, we are the living element of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, would be the group of people who would have the privilege of supping with him, holy common union, bring forth the fruit, so that they are not being controlled by the flesh. They are controlled, led by the spirit. Like Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, she's also in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, when this kind of instructions comes to us, line upon line, precept upon precept, the story of Elijah is so beautiful. Towards transfiguration. Beautiful. Presented by types and shadows in the Bible. Gilgal to Bethel. Understanding the mind of God. When you understand the mind of God, you understand what is right, what is wrong. What God expects from you. The will of God. God's design. God's desire, God's demands. That's where, when the mind of God is revealed. You know, when the mind of God is revealed, what is God's desire? Jesus knew very well. What's God's expectation? When the mind of God is revealed, the purpose of God is revealed. That's what happened at Bethel. When, you, when the mind of God is revealed, there is nothing you love more than pleasing the heart of God. The love of the world is not there. That's why Jesus asked Peter after the resurrection. Because he, before the resurrection, he gave some responsibilities to Peter. And he told when they asked him, whom do the people say that I am? 
Then these people say, you are so-and-so, so-and-so, Elijah, this and that. But whom do you see? Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Then he said, Simon, son of Jonah, blessed art thou. The flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father. I will build my church. I will build my church upon this rock. Not Peter. Revelation that he is Christ the Son of the living God. You are played through small stone. They are living stones. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you release on earth shall be released in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Peter was given that time. But you know, Peter denied the Lord. Soon after, Peter did something crazy and Jesus said, get behind me, he said. After the revelation, that's the way Peter is. And then he denied Jesus three times. But later, he said, I prayed for you. When you are converted, do the need. And that is why when Peter received the anointing, the Holy Spirit, and when people ask him, what shall we do? Repent and baptize every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So brothers and sisters, so important for us to understand these fundamental truths, beautifully showcased in the Word of God. And that is the reason that the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ is not built on man or any organization, any denomination. It is built on the foundations of the, the prophets, apostles and prophets Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And we have been identified as his position, as his sons and daughters, as his inheritance. We have been redeemed, filled. And once he begins to take ownership of us, and he will call, this is mine. This is my beloved, this is mine. So it's important for us to understand this wonderful process, brothers and sisters. And that is where, at the Jordan, the heaven opened. And the Spirit of God descended fully. And God incarnated. And he became the express image of the invisible God. God said, this is my beloved son. So brothers and sisters, when the Spirit of God takes full control of you and me, we have a single purpose. And that single purpose is to please God in everything that we do. Whatever we do in deed or in word, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For giving glory to the Father. Everything what we do in deed or word, everything. So, what a beautiful journey that we've been showcased towards Elijah's transfiguration from Gilgal to Jordan. And then, Brothers and sisters, toward that journey didn't happen overnight. Went through a process. Remember, God revealed to him not as a deity, not as an idol, not as an object of the universe, but as the logos, the spirit and the mind. The spirit of the man. And from then the all good. No turning back. No turning back. That is for reason, brothers and sisters. The bride of the Lord Jesus Christ is showcased as eagers. No one else as eagers. We are the living word of God. They are eating. They are not really. Uh, group of people who are dancing and singing and speaking in tongues. There's a bunch of people like that in charismatic Pentecostal evangelical movement. There's another bunch of people who are making Branham 
their prophet and their savior and their do all that. I'm nothing wrong with Brother Brandon because he's a wonderful man of God, true servant of God, fulfill his responsibility that is given to him by God and God. He do anything wrong or corrupt. He he fulfill his task. Like John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. I must decrease, he must increase. Matthew 25, parable of the wise virgins. Friend of the bridegroom came and said, Behold the bridegroom, go ye out to meet. That's exactly what Brother Brandon said. Told people to come back to the world. Come back to the world, not to your denomination. Don't stuck inside your denomination. Come back to the world. He is not the son of God or son of man. He is the friend of the bride. He is not the bride. Brothers and sisters, the Brennamites have missed it. End time church community has missed it. Only the true bride of the Lord Jesus Christ in this living hour will understand the truth. That's why Daniel said, for Daniel chapter 12, I'll read it again in closing again. This is very important about these wonderful things to know because Daniel chapter 12, yeah. Yes, verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. Wicked shall do wickedly. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from that time, the daily, uh, another one here, I'll say. Verse 4 says, Though Daniel shut up the words, seal the book. Even to the end time, many shall be run to and for knowledge shall be sealed. And that's why in the final ministry, many arises upon the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ and true church, starting from one corner in the east to the west. Lightning. So you don't have to go here, there and all over. So it's not a physical location. It's the responsibility of the, the law. It's not my responsibility. My responsibility is not to tell you to go to a particular place. In fact, some crazy people are doing that. Some crazy pastors from the United States are trying to get people to Israel. And some people are trying to take them to a desert. Some people are trying... This happened really. But the Bible very profoundly told us, don't go here and there. If he is there, if he is here, he said, Jesus said, don't go here and there. If you say that he is here, he is there, don't believe it. Either. Jesus told very clearly. Uh, Matthew 24, you know. He said very clearly, don't go here and there. Therefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, verse 26 of Matthew 24, He is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, He is in the secret world, believe it not. Verse 26, As a lightning coming out of the east, so shine to the west, shall be coming out. This is indeed fulfillment of the prophecy of Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 to 17. The Lord descend, the shower, the voice, shout second place, voice is taking place, last trump, the final ministry will trigger that will bring transfiguration. Brothers and sisters, this is an event that is going to take place. Not very far. The Lord will bring it. It's not going to be a magic. It's not going to be some kind of a it's beautifully when God does things, He does beautifully. Well harmonized, well synchronized, 
all for the glory and the majesty of the living God. Let's pray. Wonderful Holy Father, we are indeed thankful to you for your grace. I pray, Lord, that your grace be upon every one of us in these times. Prepare us for the wonderful journey ahead. God's wonderful grace. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all, brothers and sisters.